Sometimes when you're looking for old remains, you don't have to look any further than your own backyard. Stick around, because coming up, I'm going to show you some remains that are all but in my backyard. So yes, today's video brings me none other than my own neighborhood. And we're going to do it by e-bike. So I can stop and show you some of these uh, unique remains that are in my neighborhood. And for those of you that are familiar with the area, also show you where some of the roads here used to be at one time. Some of these roads that are currently here were not here back in the uh, early 30s. So enjoy the ride till we get to our first destination. So it is a little cool on the bike today. Thought it'd be a little bit warmer, but decided to get out of here and do this anyway, since it's a Sunday, then there isn't much traffic on these roads on a weekend. So our first point of interest is going to be coming up right up around the bend here on the left hand side. So this is the airport road bridge that was built in 1982 after having a one lane bridge um, here going across it. Nice little bridge with uh, stonework on the sides, but the point of interest is right in the back there. That is an old lime kiln, and this was on a farm here, and this was actually called Ferrera's Farm, and it does have an airstrip, which you'll see when we get further down the road, but uh, we'll walk up here a little bit. I can show you it. It is not a farm anymore. It was sold a few years ago and bought and is now known as the Inn at Bally Springs, which is a wedding venue now. But there you can see the, uh, the lime kiln in the background. And this was restored just a few years ago. They went and redid all the stonework on it and really made it look nice. And at nighttime, they have uh, a light on it, which looks really cool. So the area where they were getting the limestone from 
is right over in there, which you can't see that good right now because of everything being uh, starting to grow in and stuff. But uh, there is a pit over there where they were getting the limestone out and then processing it in that kiln over there. So yes, the uh, number down at the bottom there is 1734. That is the date that the farm was built in the back there. You might be able to see a little bit of the, the house back there. We're not going back there or anything, but the farm and the barn and everything was built in 1734. Now repurposed as a wedding venue. And if I zoom in here, there you can see the pit area right there in the center of the screen where they were getting the, the limestone from. And on the opposite side of the bridge, it is still pretty deep there, but as a kid, I used to come down here and go swimming a lot in this uh, deep hole that's right here. On a hot summer day, it was very refreshing. So the next area we came to was literally a couple hundred feet from where we were just up there around where that uh, building is up there was that bridge. But we came down to what is known as Rush's Bridge. And this was built in 1975. And I can remember as a kid when they were doing construction on this bridge and putting it in. This creek that is here is the, known as to the locals, we call it the Forgedale Creek, but it is really the northwest branch of the Perkyoman Creek. And at one time, this road was not here. So the road used to continue on just about up there where the uh, guardrail goes into the ground there, went back through the woods, you can probably see where the road bed was at one time. And right about there where that telephone pole is, was where the single lane steel truss bridge was that had wooden decking on it. It was a one lane bridge, very narrow. You could only get one car across it. And then the road continued on and came right out there just about where that pine tree is there came back out but back in the 30s this road was not here the road continued went across that bridge and right through those trees is where the road continued on and eventually came out on the Forgedale Road uh, very close to Lenape Road where Texas Eastern is and I'll show you that uh, road when we get there where it used to be. So right about here is where the road came back out. So the next stop is just another couple hundred feet right out the road here. We'll show you the private airstrip that's here which is still used today on occasions. So here is the airstrip and this is the uh, beginning of the runway, which is when the planes come in for a landing. Yeah, it is very low flying aircraft here. Um, this was also known as Ferreira's airstrip. The person that owned the, the farm back in the day had his own airplane. And that's what us locals called it. Over there in the distance, 
you can see the uh, the farmhouse over there and the barns and then down there is uh, the hangars those are newly constructed hangars and then just over there where that camper is there's some more hangars over there so during the week I do hear planes taking off from here I don't know uh, who the person is that uses it, uses this airstrip, but uh, during the week you can definitely, if you're here, you can hear and see planes taking off early in the morning. So there is more traffic on these roads than what I thought there was going to be, but go figure, if I'm trying to film, there's always more traffic around. If I wouldn't be filming, probably wouldn't have as much traffic. So we got about a mile drive down to our next destination. And it is gonna be an old furnace. And right here on the right, this driveway that's here is where that road that I showed you back there at Russia's Bridge, this was one of the areas where it came out of, but it's now somebody's driveway. I believe that uh, was actually Lenape Road it did come all the way out to here at one time. old abandoned house on the right hand side right there which one of these days that thing's gonna fall in completely but this whole area down here used to go fishing a lot when I was a kid before it was posted. You haven't been able to fish in this meadow probably since the late 80s. This headstone that's coming up here will be our next stop. So just behind this headstone is what was known as the Dale Ironworks. The Dale Furnace was in operation from 1791 to 1822 and then the Dale Forge was in operation from 1804 to 1868. It was built by Thomas Potts, Joseph Potts Jr., and John Smith. Erected by the estate of David Shaw in 1826-18 from 1826 to 1877. So this area that is here is also known to us locals. This used to be called Hetrick's Farm and it is now abandoned. And the meadows up in the back there where I used to go fishing. So there is the big farmhouse, which is decaying away. And there used to be a huge barn right about there. The building up there is falling down. And then just in these weeds right here, which you can't see because everything's getting green, is the actual location of the furnace. You can see right over there 
there's remains of a of a building over there is a stone wall but if I could get down to the creek you would be able to see right in there where the uh, furnace used to be because it literally stood right about here and then right down here that white building used to be the office for the furnace at one time interesting decorations or decorative sides there on that if you look right there they look like upside down crosses on the eve there of the building so right in this area was where the uh the whole furnace building would have been here and on the other side of the stream but there was definitely some good fishing in that area down there at one time you remember when i said about planes taking off from that airport there goes one So if we would have stayed back there at the airport just a little bit longer, we would have caught, would have caught a plane taking off. So the next area we're going to go to, we're going to stop where the uh, general store used to be at one time. Known as the Forgedale store, or us locals called it Saunders store back in the day. And here is the, the creek running along the road. And yeah, I used to fish this whole creek when I was a kid. One thing that's interesting about that airport that's back there that I forgot to mention when we were there, if you look for it, on the uh, the FAA maps it is known as area 52 I find that a little ironic we all know where area 51 is and what that is out there in Nevada well that little airports known as area 52 So this was the main intersection at one time where Forgedale Road back in the 30s used to intersect with Crow Hill Road, which is what I'm on right now, and Dale Road, which is what we just turned off of. So there you can see right there, which is now somebody's driveway, but that's where Forgedale Road went straight on up through there. And in the distance, you can see the road up there by Texas Eastern. And then here is Forge, what is now called Forgedale Apartments, but this used to be the Forgedale Inn at one time, Forgedale Hotel, Saunders Store. Back in the 80s, this used to be a bar and restaurant. It used to come down here and shoot pool and uh, play video games when I was a kid and get something to eat here. They did have really good food, but since then, it is nothing more than apartments anymore used to be a real nice old wooden bar in there 
something you would see from like in the Western movies with a mirror on it, real nice woodwork and everything. So here is more of the Forgedale Creek and the fishing areas where I used to go as a kid. I used to fish this bridge a lot here. And on the other side of the bridge here, yep, the sandbar is still here where I used to fish from. This bridge used to be crowded on the first day of trout season. So continuing on past the old Forgedale Hotel and Dale Road used to go right straight through there at one time. This part of Dale Road that you're seeing right now was not here back in the 30s. It used to come out way down there where you see the uh, those mailboxes down there in the yard and everything. That's where it used to come out. It was only in the 1940s that they changed the route of Forgedale Road and put this section in. So we got a little bit of a drive yet till we get to the next destination. Crossing over the little creek that runs behind my house. Comes down off the hill and flows into the Forgedale Creek. Coming up on Texas Eastern, the big pipeline pumping station. That's all but in my backyard. But you might be able to see the next point of interest right up here. On the right, or on the left, rather. So there is another lime kiln that was used back in the day. Maybe it was used with the farm that's up there on Lenape Road that used to uh, be the Van Farm, which is now Prince Law Offices. But it was nice that when they built Texas Eastern here, in the 19, early 1950s, they left that lime kiln there. And it's been hit many a times already with cars, with accidents and everything. As you can see, it's slowly falling apart. But they still left it there after all these years. For the most part, still intact. But... Pretty cool that it's still there. It would be nice if Texas Eastern would uh, go and restore that, but I highly doubt they will. Haven't rode these roads on a bike in 40 some years. And I must say, it is a lot easier with an e-bike than what it was when I was a teenager. Texas Eastern is pretty quiet today. In fact, the turbines aren't even running at all. 
the two new ones that are built. And then here is the intersection of Lenape Road and Forgedale Road. And right here is where that road, when we were back there at Russia's Bridge, this is where the road used to come out back in the 30s. Used to meet up right here. No remains of it today except uh, the cutout for when it used to be there. And there's a look at Texas Eastern at their new turbine building that was just built within the last uh, two years. Used to be the buildings down in the back there, which this is blocking now, but there was uh, four turbines, four buildings down there that had four turbines in it, which are basically jet engines. And they built this building, went from four turbines down to two, and it's a lot more quieter than what it used to be when I was a kid. Funny how technology advanced in all those years. And like I said, this place was built in the early 1950s. Used to be all farmland here and right here in the front and down along Forgedale Road, it used to be a village here at one time. There were maybe five or six houses in here that if you worked at the plant, they provided housing for you. You don't see that hardly anymore these days. Going by the old van farm here, which is now Prince Law Offices. We'll take a spin by my grandmother's farm where I grew up, which is directly behind my place. All these houses that are along here were not here back in the 70s. The neighborhood certainly got built up over the years. A little bit of a slow ride going up this hill. It's not terribly steep, but it's just a long hill. There's the old farmhouse. And the old barn where the tractor used to be parked, right under there, and the garage. Farm was built in 1816. And the old Dangler farm on my left. And then right on the corner here of Deer Run Road, which used to be called Benfield Road and Lenape Road, was the big blue chicken farm that used to be there until it burnt down in the early 2000s. Almost back home. So, not a bad ride for a Sunday afternoon. That whole ride there took uh, one hour and one minute to drive around the neighborhood, and it was just uh, over five miles, 5.3 miles. 
and looking at my stats on my Guard Pro um, Ultra 2 Plus. I burned 210 calories and the heart rate on the trip was 94. So these watches are very nice for doing outdoor monitoring your outdoor activities and everything in your heart rate. So hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of a history lesson there from basically my backyard and you locals that get to see this video, some of my neighbors and friends or whoever, there's some of the history and some of the things in the area that's known as Forgedale. So until next time, it's have a ball and do it all. We'll see you soon.